for myself, if I feel that, oh my God, this is like hitting the music so well and the phrasing and everything, the feeling is like you are part of the band or like part of the instrument of the instrument in the music. Right. And that feeling is amazing because again at the and one two three studios my name is mike bello and with us today is uh tomas tibor Drafi tibor what's up how you doing hello hello happy to be part of this so i'm i'm very really well yeah looking forward to our talk yeah i i felt like there, there's so many people right there, there's so many people to talk with and no matter where you are in life everyone has a story everyone everyone Most has stories Yes, you know, because that's what life is about, right? Life is made up of all these little stories and they make for some interesting uh, conversation. And I knew I had to have you here because you've made some huge waves, positive, <laughs> in the hustle world, the hustle community at large. Thank you so much. I knew that we needed to have representation on both sides of the fence and that, that fence meaning the intergenerational friends, the, the new gen, the OGs, the veterans. And I'm also thinking like new gens are also people who are not young, but did not have a hustle life and they're coming into hustle. So that, you know, yeah. in my opinion, they're still new gen, right? But you've been doing stuff, you and several other people around the planet have been doing things that are really engaging. You guys take risks and chances and innovative in what you're doing, especially since you're not at the Mecca, right? Yeah. You know, New York being the Mecca of Latin hustle and all the iterations of hustle. So T boy, we had to we had to get you here. And I, I'm so glad that you're here with us. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start out with questions. Go and, for it. And then we'll just take it from there. Yeah. So yeah, when yeah. did you originally become exposed to the hustle? So I started uh started twenty twelve when I was in New York with my that time partner called Sabina and she took me to to Jeff's class so my first introduction to hustle was kind of like Jeff's uh, Nusta Hustle classes in oh, 2012 Jeff, Jeff Selby yes uh, that was 2012 and basically from there in 20 I we came back and uh, I think yeah it was 2014 when I moved to London and uh from that point like we started to we started like uh, building the community there and I think it was like 2016 when I started to like go more into Latin hustle, when I started to get like more inspired and like getting to know like more about like the history. Yeah, 2015, 2016. And uh, there was a time when we flew to US with my uh, dance partner Inga. And we went to New York, we went to LA and a few other cities. And uh, we met like the OGs. We had like lots of classes going on and private and uh yeah I, that was that was the time when we like really started to like dig more into the into the hustle and like the whole culture and basically how how it was <laughs> it's interesting so you, you know 2012 which is probably around the time when jeff really started to you know take yeah. off with the new style hustle but your background is in again remind us what your background in dance is so i do i do street dance in general that's my Basically, that's my first thing. I'm focused on a style called popping, which is like a funk style, and that's my background. Like I was, I'm doing that. I was actually counting in the, the other day, and I'm like dancing like for like 18 years, popping. And uh, but when I'm thinking about like when did I start dancing, I feel like it. I was uh, since kid, since we were like kids, you know, we were like always like dancing uh, at home. Basically, my roots. I'm a gypsy, so. That's like the whole culture, basically, about the music and the dance and like being always the family together. And like we were having like always home parties with family and like dancing in the living room all the time. 
But like then, like technically, like when I started to like learn more about like dance as its own, I was around like 14, 15. So yeah, dancing for like a good 18 years. Uh, I'm curious about this. You went to Jeff's class, but you were in New York for a different reason, right? I mean, you didn't come to New York to take Jeff's class, right? No, came, no, no, no. So, you came for a, a popping or a street dance, something. You know what? That time, that time we came, we went to New York just to try something new. We just had this kind of like an idea like, oh, let's go to New York. Maybe we're going to find some job. Maybe we can, we can just live there for a bit. And like having this kind of like a dreamland, right? But then we realized it's not that easy <laughs> to live in New York <laughs> just like that, right? Right. right. So I was, I was actually like dancing a lot. I was like going to like many classes and uh, many sessions and battles around. Mm -hmm. But actually my first ever introduction to Hustle uh, was 2009 when I was in New York for the first time. And I went to a party called Sul uh, Sullivan Room. It's a, it's, a called, it's a party called Funk Box. It's a party for like street dancers mostly. It always plays like a house music, but there's like all styles going. Right. And I went there at the time and I'm seeing in a cypher, Archie Burnett and, uh, and Marjorie, the legendary house dancer. And they were hustling. And I was like, whoa, this is amazing. But I didn't actually like pay any, uh, pay any focus to it, right? right so, right. because I was like, oh, that's nice. But it's nothing like that I had like really close to. Then when I started to like go to Jeff's classes, I was like, oh my God, this is something what I saw already that time. And I already got like uh, interested in it, but I didn't take it nowhere else afterwards. I was like, oh, probably they just freestyling. Yeah. But then in 2012, I started to go to the classes there. Right. And you were here during that time for a month more? Uh, no, no, no. We were there for six months. Oh, nice. Yes. Good. That's plenty of time to really settle in and really assume what the dance is informing you. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it, I didn't, we didn't start going to the classes like straight from the beginning. I think it was just like a, maybe like a good, like a three month ish, but it was on like a really like a regular bait. We started to go like probably like two times a week or three times a week and then like dancing in the evenings, like at the, at like parties and stuff. But yeah, but that time I'd say I didn't really know about the, about the socials, like what was going on because that tears, those years, like the socials were like going on as usual, right? There was like no change, right? But I wasn't really exposed to to kind of like that 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 uh, that kind of like a style of people. But I was because we were always going to a street dance parties, oh, I right? See. To the clubs yeah. where like the dancers goes, and right. then so we were we were hustling there. I see. So you never heard about dance sport or anything like that during that, that time? time? No. That time, no. <laughs> wow, you missed a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, you know, yes. it, you know, it all equals out, right? But imagine if, if you had been, I, I could imagine how you would have been inspired by going oh my God. to a dance sport social. Yeah. Oh, my God. But, you know, I think it's like, it's supposed to be like that. Yeah, no, and, I, uh, I totally agree. No, it I definitely, totally. like, it definitely, like, supposed to be like that because now as I, as I grow as well, as a person in my mind and everything, I feel the dance like obviously like different, right? So, yeah. the uh, like the way I'm enjoying it now, it wouldn't be the time for me to enjoy it that time because I wouldn't understand it that time. But this is slightly off topic. If I had it to do, like if someone said, oh yeah, you get to live your life over, what would you change? I wouldn't change anything because then I wouldn't be the person that I am now. And exactly, I, I, yeah. I like myself. You know yeah. what I mean? You know, I could, I, I could use to change this or that. It's good to, to know that, yeah, that was around. I could have done this, you know, should have, would have, could have. doesn't really apply because then you negate who you are. At yeah, the present. it good. shapes you. It does. Like the, the life situations in general, like it shapes you to a certain person, certain character. Right, right. Listen, yeah. you know, as a solo dancer, initially, did you find it difficult to pick up partner dancing? Yeah. In the beginning, definitely, yes. I remember many times I didn't want it to go if my partner didn't want it to go. Mm. I felt really, I felt very awkward to dance with someone because imagine like for like a, many years already like dancing popping and like other street dance styles. Now I'm going to dance with someone. It was a big change for me, right? To understand mm. it, like, oh, like what I should do, how should I do it? Like I'm always used to just dancing on my own, taking care of someone. 
So, yeah, I felt very, very awkward. And like in the beginning, I really like, I think I was even like going there just because my partner went there that time, like just to go with her. But, right. and I, and obviously I think as many beginners, they have it, like they just want to dance just with their own partner, like because they scared and like shy and stuff. Right. I had it, I had it too. I had it too. But yeah, yeah, I was, I didn't, I didn't really enjoy in the beginning. <laughs> that was <Right>. funny. <laughs> but would you say that the difference could be part of it besides you know, that sharing the space and all that is, you know, all I, when you're dancing solo, all eyes are on me and you could be innovative. You can do whatever you want, right? Because there are no rules, right? The only rule is to enjoy yourself and, yeah. and put out whatever comes to mind and wow the crowd, right? So I imagine, is that also part of the awkwardness when you first started that all eyes weren't on you, that it, it would have to be shared with someone else i don't think so no 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 no. it wouldn't i didn't really feel that when i'm dancing with someone when, when i was that that time dancing with someone mm -hmm. and i thought like not all the eyes are just on me but they split between two i never yeah. thought of that okay no i never thought of that obviously like when you dance on your own you are the spotlight right 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 but when you dance with someone is i don't know if Obviously, if it's a showcase or something like that, it's a different thing. But if it's, yeah. a so, if it's a social dance, I think it should be just a conversation between us two. And I'm not really thinking of like, oh, is, are people looking at me or just on me or something? I wouldn't think of that. So what do you think is the difference? How did solo dancing differ from Dancing Hustle for you? Ooh. For a very, very long time, I couldn't really connect with them. Like for me, it was really separate two dances, right? Right. But then at some point, I realized how much they have in common and what can I take from hustle to popping and from popping to hustle, right? So let's say, first I'm going to say like what's to me like, like together and then I'm going to say like how it feels differently. Sure. So to understand like in popping, I understood basically how my core needs to work and how it needs to be engaged. Right. Where is my weight from on, like in the middle on my different like legs? Is it heel and toe? And just to being able to being aware, like I'm here in this moment, I can feel that my weight is on my left and I'm being aware of that. Okay. So as you're, as you're doing it, as I'm doing it, as right. I'm breathing, as I'm thinking, as I'm listening to the music, I'm feeling, trying to feel my body, like where it's basically going. Okay. And this is actually something that I took to hustle from Popin. And I think it was a huge change for me to understand like, oh my God, I can move like so much with control just with understand how your body works, right? It's actually something that I really like to teach in my classes as well, to understand like, where is your weight? Because I think that's like the most, one of the most important keys to understand like, where is your weight to feel comfortable? For your partner, right? Not to feel wobbly, agree. So to, feel, to feel stable. Mm -hmm. Then, second thing I took from pop into hustle is that how I listen to the music. So, in my mind, like the structure is that the music is on the top. It goes to me as a to, as a to a leader, and through me, it needs to go to my follow. So I feel that I'm led by the music, right? And that's something that I'm using basically in my street dance. And I understood how I can basically do it within the, within the, and one, two, three steps in hustle, because I understand like how the music, music works, right? Like where is the phrasing coming? How many eights I have into the phrase. So I can basically uh, emphasize something that I feel like something's coming in the music. So I feel I'm connected to the music and mm. it's definitely through my street dance background. And then uh, what I'm taking from hustle to pop in is that I feel like in hustle, there is lots of, for me, how I dance, there is lots of shapes going on because I don't really, and that's something actually coming from pop in as well. I feel like your shapes are like when you do basically certain angles, it's a character. I'm not sure what you mean by shapes. Shapes. Let's say like when I'm shaping my body, let's say this way, if I'm shaping it this way. I, okay. If I'm shaping it this way. Mm -hmm. Right? So it basically gives you these shapes and that's kind of like the, the character, right? So I'm not just like in the middle, 
but I'm going to be here, let's say. So this so is to me. Body, body positioning. Yeah, body positioning. It's like when yeah. someone's taking pictures of you. you you're posing. Right. You're okay. posing, right? And that's mm -hmm. like the interesting part about it that I don't like to be square, but I like to be stylish. I like to be cool. I like to be when someone's taking a picture of me. And that's like how I move. And to me, it feels very jazzy. Like when I'm looking like all like a jazz dancers around the world or top dancers, let's say, they all shape. They mm -hmm. all do basically. And that's like the interesting part. And I feel like that's why we are in. That's why for us is interesting to look at them. Because they're doing shapes. It's not like a straight body. There is always there is always kind of like a certain misdirection into the head, into the shoulders, the chest. And this is something I'm taking from hustle, the jazzy feeling to my mm. pop in. So it's funny, it's actually really like you can take so much from one to the other. I think it's really it's really like combining really well. Yeah. yeah, I think you do a great job at that, especially now. I mean, I, I've seen you dance, you know, in person and on videos, and I see, I'm envisioning exactly what you're describing. Mm. And it, it makes a lot of sense, especially since you've paid particular attention to that. Like, you're purposeful in that aspect of dancing. And frankly, I'm not that interested in the street style dances. I think they're great and all that, but they don't interest me to really go, oh yeah, let me, let me take, let me yeah. sit down yeah, yeah. and watch a show, whatever. But I understand where you're coming from, from that position, from your background. And what's good about that background is that you're able to really form the dance, make it into something that's a, a, an interesting picture. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. So when people are watching you, they, they see everything that you just finished describing. Yeah. This, tell us of your travels as a hustler, including where you started dancing, teaching, and relocating. So when we first learned in, in New York, uh, we brought it back to my ex-partner, Sabina. She's from Czech and I'm from Slovakia, but we are actually really close, right? We used to be one country, Czechoslovakia. So we are actually really close. And uh, we started to teach like around these ends here, like in our countries. And then we started to do the travel, like we went to Vienna, we went to Hungary, we went to Poland, let's say. And then in 2014, uh, when I moved to London, there was already a little scene going on, but there was not, there was, they weren't like really into like doing classes and stuff like that. They just had like a little gems. So when I moved there, my kind of like, uh, my vision, was that I want to start classes there and I want to start like a bit more basically like a consist consistency with it, right? <laughs> and uh, and it happened. So I started the classes going on and then Inga joined as well. So we started to dance more. And then we started to basically travel around Europe, around close countries. We went to, we, we, I think like we went to like kind of like all around Europe, to be honest. You know, we went to France, we went to Paris, we went to Amsterdam or like Holland in general, like many, many places, Germany, Austria, Finland, all around. That was you all around. Or you and Inga or both? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Both together. Okay. Both together. And then we actually had like a few amazing tours in Asia. When we went to, there is a, a house dancer, amazing house dancer called Hiro from Japan, from Tokyo. And he organized this, uh, street dance camp Japan, which is beautiful camp in the nature close to uh Mount Fuji. it's amazing it's uh it's really really beautiful and there is like a lot of street dancers going on and uh, street dancing going on and uh, amazing teachers as well mostly from street dance right i see so we were like invited a few times there i think like a five times actually to go to teach to the camp and then we basically uh, had like these steps around so we went to hong kong we went to taiwan we went to vietnam and uh, we were teaching their classes as well. So that was amazing. Is this 2015 yeah. around there? Well, this is kind of like years going on. I would say like this is kind of like 2013, 2014. Yeah, like from 2014 till 2020, I would say. Oh, it worked, okay. Even going, like, going like all around. Yes. Nice, nice. Yes. So yeah, we were teaching like all around. And then uh, we even did... To Vancouver that time in 2016 but uh, there was a time when I actually met Anita there as well and like we met the whole hustle scene in Vancouver we were so amazed that time it was amazing I mean still is and I was lucky enough to 
to go to Brazil to teach as well. Wow. That was amazing. That was an amazing experience too. Yeah. So, so yeah, the travel kind of like goes like still and uh, we still traveling around. I think it's, I think it's the most beautiful part of it. Uh, the travel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To travel yeah. and to dance and just like meeting new people and the communities and everybody's so welcome, you know, and like you can meet really nice people. In your mind or your, your thoughts, are all the communities very similar or, and if there are any differences that you think you've experienced? I think like every scene is unique, especially the people make, make it unique, you know, like every scene have a, has a, like a certain characters in the scene that you already know, like, where are they from? I think what I would say, like, the differences are, is most like what people are listening to, like at the social. Some people like to listen more to more like a, a house, house music. Some scene like to listen, like to really R&B uh, music only, or like more on the R&B side than the disco music, let's say. Mm. So I think like many, many cities or like many uh, communities, they just, mostly they being different in this one, like the music part. Obviously, like some, some communities are much bigger, some are much smaller, and some communities has amazing dances, like already like on really, really high level. And some people just like starting the communities as well. So they just keep like traveling and going on and, and learning. So yeah, I think every, every community is really special. All of them are definitely very special. So with, with that in mind, other than New York, which would you say, don't get jealous people, uh, which would you say is like your favorite community or at least your favorite couple of uh, communities? Ooh, that's but a hard one. So I have to say London. That's my, it's my second home. We were part of it, like when it all like went up and it was beautiful. So definitely London. And I would say, oh, this is a tricky question. <laughs> it's a tricky question. When I say two more. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. So definitely Vancouver. Mm. I, yeah, I, it's like many people in really good level, with really good level, you can have fun with so many followers and leaders are really good, uh, good as well. And then Poland. Nice. Definitely. Poland, Poland, it's a, they have a big community in many cities and uh, they have amaz amazing dancers. Many of them are like really, really good dancers. So I always enjoy going to Poland for like socials and events. Wow. That's good to hear and good to know too for those of you who are watching and have yeah. not either experienced those communities or have been planning on going. Those are good words. You know, I've seen a lot. Look, since I've come back to Hustle, and it's not long, you know, compared to compared to you, I'm, I'm just getting in, right? I, I okay. came back in 21. But I've, I've made it my business to try and find out. Uh, other people know more than I do. But I try to find out who's doing what, where, and I'm seeing growth. I've always seen growth, and, and things are starting to pick up, as you. I, I know you know this. And... It's interesting to, to know and to see these communities globally are, they're not waiting. They're not waiting for people to come by and, you know, one or two people may go out there, pick up some seeds and plant Bring them. Bring them back, yeah. It's beautiful. That, it's, yeah, it's, it's a real thing and it's, it's exciting. Yeah, it's definitely. It's really exciting because then when you go, hey, I'm going to take a holiday, I'm going to go to X. Do they have hustle there? <laughs> Yeah, 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 exactly. Like, and then you go, yeah, there's hustle. You can go there. You know, it's not as big as Y and Z, but you still can get some dancing. In. Yeah, and that's part of the goal, right? Is to is to be able to to spread the word and to spread the joy of hustle. So, like, when folks like you say, "Oh, you know, I really like," as you say, London, Poland, Vancouver. You know, for those people, they know that their communities are thriving and. Other people who want to be able to join in on those communities can do so because they have something from from you, which I believe is is reputable. Thank you. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on uh, hustle competitions, and do you encourage others to compete? Yeah, I like it. I enjoy it. And if I encourage other people to do it, yes, I think it's amazing for us to to learn how to how to perform, like. And, uh, it's, uh, and it's, uh, it's building a character as well, you know? So I feel like many people who are, let's say, like a shy or like they're not really outgoing and they're more like a social dance, like a social dancers, and they just want to experience. It's a different feeling. It's not that close, 
when you're just dancing socially with someone, right? It's not mm-hmm. like a, just like a pure conversation, but it's a conversation with everyone. It's something that for me, my mind, like, oh, let me tell you something, mm-hmm. right? So it's yeah. like for everyone and it's more, and it's more open. I believe for many people it's really challenge, challenging as well. I think I was really lucky and really happy with it that how I grew up is that we were having, as a dancer, we were having like always shows as well. So kind of like this came to me like really naturally as well. Like if I compete or like if I'm standing on a stage, if I'm, let's say, like presenting something, you know. So to me, it became like really naturally. And many times I hear people like being like really shy and stuff like that. And then I'm realizing that our background like talks so much about how we are into and how we're coming into the dance. But right. I, I, I think it's definitely good to try, like to go to a comp. It's a good boost. Kind of like, let me, let me show what I worked on, let's say. Or like, so that's a, this is how I'm looking at it, right? I'm here for a reason, let's say. And I want to enjoy myself. That's the most important thing. Because many times we get into the stress that, oh, people are looking at me. There is other people. Are they better not or, uh, than me? Are they right. going to do something? It's like too much overthinking, right? Mm-hmm. I think it's the most important thing is like to really just like go there, enjoy the music. Hopefully the music is good. Just, just be there. And like to, it's a, it's a, it's a presentation of yourself, of your persona. So what would you say is the biggest benefit from competing? The self-confidence. It's definitely coming up, mm-hmm. you know, for everyone, I believe so. Yes. And um, is that in case if you are shy into this stuff, it's kind of like to me, like you are, you are going against your demons, you know, against your fear that I'm here to basically win this kind of like a inside thing in my mind that I don't know how to compete or is this the first time I'm shy. It's kind of like a battle that you are about to win. And I think like the end point, the... That when you finish the dance, it it feels it feels good. Yes. Even if it doesn't need to be feel, let's say, like because many times we say, "Oh, it could be better." Like it's basically every time you say that it, it could be better, right? It every time could be better. But in the same time, on the other hand, you win the internal thing that you went into it, so you prove yourself. And I think that feeling it's uh, is the most important one. Yeah, I, I agree with that too. I've seen novices, no, not necessarily novices, more like advanced beginners who do like some of these weekender events and they join like a Jack and Jill or a Pro-Am and then they they go in all nervous, which is, you know, understandable. Yeah. But then they come out more confident, as you mentioned. They yeah, come, yeah, yeah. Wow, I did it and people liked it because, you know, we're all going to, you know, encourage them, you know, the audience. But on top of that, Sometimes they're matched up with some really good pros or the music sometimes, as you mentioned, the, the music really is kicking for their particular piece. And yeah. then they, either they see themselves on video and they go, wow, that's, and then they're dead. I, I've seen them. They're dancing from that point on and because their confidence, it's a, it's a big confidence builder, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. they feel so, so connected to themselves and, you know, to their partners. And imagine that feeling that if the if you are really happy actually how you dance, that you you went there really shy, and you actually oh my god I love this music oh my god I love this dance, and like how, when you finish, it's like that feeling it's uh, it's beautiful afterwards as well right so yeah. it's definitely I think like yeah definitely people should try, everyone should try. <laughs> Your hustle community is in London, right? Is there a, a particular name for it? And uh, and if so, what are, what are your future community plans? Community in London, it's called Hustling London. Uh, I was helping out the building the community, and uh, it was uh, one of the best parts. I help. I was kind of like helping around to like build communities around as well. I went to Russia. That was like time ago. And uh, I was helping them like to give like some advices, like how to do it, what to do. I was having some calls with like the time during Corona, actually, with people from Singapore uh, trying to help out. And it was amazing. Now I'm based in Bratislava, in Slovakia. Okay. There is a, there is a little community here as well. There are being socials as well. It's not that really open because I've, I think like... Many people are still scared to go to the hustle, right? To kind of like this kind of like a partner dance. 
We'll be actually planning to do a social in actually next week. So yeah, that will be amazing as well. Great. It's called Club Hustle. And uh, we have amazing DJ uh, from London coming, Optimus Funk. So that will be, that will be brilliant. Can't wait. What, what made the change from London to Bratislava? Home sweet home. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> home sweet home. You know, yeah. six years is quite a lot. If you are not with your family, with your close ones, I have a beautiful relationship like with my, like at home, you know, so I was missing my mom a lot. I was missing my family, my friends, my really close friends from childhood. So this was another part of it. And London can be really hectic, man. It can be, you know, like same as New York. So right. it's, it's a, it's a struggle sometimes, you know, you don't really feel always safe. You don't really feel always in peace because there is constantly something going on around you. And it's really hard to sit down and just like, be like, ah, you know, but London, London makes you run. Boom, boom. You feel yeah. like you're on the go all the time there. All the time. Yeah. And all so the now, time. Lava, you, you just feel more settled in. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yes. I love it here. I love yeah. it here. It's much smaller. I'm much more closer with my family, with my friends. I'm seeing them like much more often as well. So it's a, uh, yeah, it was definitely needed to, to come back home. Does it affect your dancing at all? Uh, whether it's popping or hustle? Yeah, it, it does. Like, yeah, it does. Unfortunately, it does. You know, London is really big. So that means like more people going to get into the dance, let's say, or like the people are more open because, it, because it's a, it's a multicultural city, right? Right, right. But Bratislava is quite far from London in mm. a, in a way, like how, how people think, right? So the house scene is, uh, bigger, obviously the, in whole Slovakia and whole country, there is not really much of uh, popping dancers. So that's been quite heavy. For me as well, not to like proper like dance with someone. Right. I have like few like close friends that I can dance with, but you know, when someone is really, really focused on something the way you are, it feels different. You know, it feels different when you exchange, exchanging like that. So I miss that from London the most, I would say. Do you think that'll change in, in any time soon or you have no real concrete? Mm. For pop, for popping, it's we building it. For street dance, it's really being building, you know. But mm -hmm. in hustle, like I'm dancing here with Anita, which is amazing, and uh, the scene here is like getting better as well. But it still needs time. It's slow going, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slow going, exactly. Yeah, like step by step. That's good. It's slow, but there's progress. There's things. Yes, that yes, happening. definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, not like during COVID times, right? Like, oh my God, yeah, definitely yeah, not. Imagine how that was. I mean, I saw some of your postings. Of course, I had to go look back and see what was up with T-Boy? What, what was he doing? And of course, all I see is either pop in or, you know, or hustle or something like that. Yeah. And sometimes you forget that COVID happened, right? <laughs> yeah, actually, I think like life can like back to being like straight, really, really busy. Then you don't even realize that two years ago, we were like all like still like looked up. It's crazy, crazy. crazy. Yeah. So I saw that you had posted a, a, a video of you and Inga dancing. Yeah, I haven't danced for like a year. And now in my hand, I'm going, like, what do you mean? And then I looked at the date. Mm -hmm. <laughs> COVID. But I did notice during that time that you had, I think you tried to do some things virtually. Mm -hmm. I had a thing also called a uh, hustle mentor. Can you yeah. tell us a bit more about that? It's a hustle mentorship. It's basically a program that we have with Anita. And it's a, it's a kind of like an online private classes going on. We still do it. So basically it's a program of four classes. People just reached, uh, reach out to us and like, uh, we basically just work with them like privately on zoom. Yeah, we were lucky to work with like many people, like basically around the world. So right. that was, yeah, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. And it's still actually going on. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. And it's it's, regardless. It's basically like we, we, like they reach out people and we just try to talk like what, what they would like to like work on. Right. If it's something like a technique or styling or listen, how, how we listen to the music and stuff like that. So we basically create a plan for like four classes. Many people take like more courses. So in that case we can work like more and deeper into the stuff, which is amazing. 
this is this is basically how it works. So just if someone is interested, reach out on the Hasa Collective Instagram. We are happy to work with people and to share. Do you find or have you gotten over situations where, because, you know, when you're learning, one of the things to learn the most besides styling, and styling really takes a long time, is the connection, right? So teaching connection virtually, have you found that difficult? And if so, how did you overcome it, if at all? Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a hard one to teach. I think it makes you a better teacher in a way because you need to explain something much more deeper than just, oh, look at this. This is how I'm holding my frame, let's say. But I'm, I'm, I'm looking basically more inside, like what I'm feeling. Where is my, what is my body doing? Where is my weight? Where, what, is, what is this arm doing? Is it tense? Is it relaxed? Where is my head? How's my shoulders? So it makes me uh, look more into, like, into the movement much deeper. And I think what's really, really helping when we teach connections is to understand how we breathe, how the breath works with like the whole body, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's like the that's like the key point to understand like we need to understand how we breathe, and especially when we start to like to teach the the few steps of this kind of stuff, we teach like to breathe together, like literally like go to a hug and like to cl and close your eyes. And like try to have a like few breaths together, try to match the breath, how it works, how it feels. The and basic Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then like to feel basically and then being aware what is the body doing. Mm. So you already match the breath and then like thinking like, okay, so this is my body doing, this is I'm engaging, my weight is here, and so on, so on. It's really challenging actually. It uh, is no, I, I totally agree with that. Uh, especially yeah. There's so many things that are nuanced that we take for granted as, you know, uh, in general, just, you know, people who dance generally speaking, they, a lot of times you'll see people that are dancing and I'm sure that they are unaware of what their body is doing. They just, oh yeah, the motion. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that, especially socially, you do what you want. But if you want to get better, there are certain things that you need to be, that you should be aware of, right? And things that you could break down now, sometimes well, people have told me that, you know, I, I'm so focused on minutia, you know, the, the little details and things like that. And yeah, sometimes the little details are the, what do they call it? The magic bullet. Right? That's all you need, the detail. Yeah, if you get the details, the specific details, then you could turn a corner with that. And case in point, one thing that I really loved, I saw you, because, you know, at the weekend, I'm at the, I'm at the classes recording, the, you know, you guys dancing and teaching and stuff. And one thing I really, really loved that you did, it made so much sense that I didn't even realize I was doing it myself because, you know, I'm, I'm a different type of dancer. But the great thing that you did, one of the things that I really loved you, when you were teaching with Inga, uh, I forget where it was. It might have been L.A. And you were, because we know that because the M123, it's basically three, four time, right? So it doesn't match up with the music. You can't really go that's the music like when you dance mambo right it's, yeah. the formula is four four time you're there and your dance is in four four time and the music's in four four time so you can really speak what's happening in the music yeah you have to know the record but you know how the record is you know you know how the the song is formulated with popular dance music it's still four four time but hustle is not yeah and so you were showing people how to actually bring those eights in and i loved it and i think that's because you're being intentional with your instruction. Mm -hmm. You're not just saying, okay, here's a turn pattern, do this, do that. Like you're really caring enough to give your constituents of the moment because they're there to see you. Because like, there are other classes happening, right? So they came to see T Boy and whoever you're teaching with, whether it's Ingo or Anita or what have you. So you give them these pearls that I think other instructors could learn from. Mm. There are a lot of instructors, they have a lot of good, a lot of good material. Yeah. And they're just giving the basic, okay, do this turn here, this is the turn, blah, blah, blah. No, a lot of times there's no mention about connection, what's going on. And in your case, you said, come to the music, like do that. You want to finish the eighth? This is how you can do it. Yeah. And uh, I applaud you for that. 
I, thank I, you so I, much. Appreciate it. I, I've seen you, right? Mostly. I mean, today's a little different. But I've, I've always seen you with a baseball cap and your beard. Although, I have to say, <laughs> I saw, I don't know how long ago, and you had, I don't know what happened. Maybe you trimmed your beard too too much and you had to take it all off and you left your mustache. That happened to me too uh, a few times. So is the beard and the cap like your signature or is it just the most comfortable for you? Or what is that? And is that ever going to change or that's just the T-boy look? I just want to say a few things before we go to my look uh, about the music that we were talking <laughs> before. <laughs> I think there is basically a connection, be, uh, have to be, must be connection between the movement and the dance, and the, the movement and the music. Mm -hmm. So when we listen to 8 car music, we should be able to dance to 8 car music. Like the feeling, the feeling from it that you're dancing into the music, it's brilliant. There is nothing more. For myself, if I feel that, oh my God, this is like hitting the music so well and the phrasing and everything, it's you becoming you becoming like the feeling is like you are part of the band or like part of the instrument of the instrument in the music right. and that feeling is amazing because at some point like a few years back i actually bought uh, a bass guitar and i was like i want to try to play because bass is the fundamental thing of funk which is like the era where it's like popping coming from and i feel like like it's all about the bass you know like when the bass is good and funky like you don't need much more you know right. so i think it's really uh important to to basically to listen to it and when i was when i was learning how to play the feeling of it that i'm part of the music that is being created it's somewhere else it's like you're riding through a galaxies it's beautiful like when you are part of something that is being played the feeling is amazing. So when I can do this with my dance, with my movement, you are so much into in the present moment. You are so much into the dance that you are actually having. And uh, you are so much more connected to the person because the music is connected to you. you right. know? So I think it's really, I think it's important actually for, I would say for our generation in general, I mean, for all generation to to pay attention more to the music. I always say that, like to pay more attention to the music because we're dancing because of the music. Absolutely. That's why we started to move our bodies because there is something in the music that makes us move. And I think we should be able to bring that into the style that we want to do. If it's hustle, if it's a West Coast swing, whatever other style. I'm not just talking in just about the hustle, but in general, yeah. And now we can go back to my look the cap and the beard so basically yeah the cap is my kind of like my thing uh when i go to my barber for a few days i'm not wearing anything because i like it i like it i like it clean and fresh i right. went actually i went actually recently so i still kind of like it you know so mm -hmm. i'm just not wearing a cap now but i'll probably tomorrow or like the day after i already start right and right. um so i love the i love the cap the the headwear in general and the beard I started to grow in 20, what was it? Probably like 20, 2013, I think. And then it became kind of like my, my character. It used to be big. It used to be like here. I, and it, yeah. was, yeah, it yeah. was nuts. It was crazy. It was proper. I loved it. <laughs> proper. <laughs> yeah, it was a proper beard. Like I loved, I loved it. I loved it. But <laughs> if you want to make it like neat, and I'm the person that I like to take care of it as well you need to trim it a lot and that costs money i can't do it myself because i'm too like i'm being like a it needs to be perfect so mm. i was always scared to like trim it myself and barber costs money in london is that a cheap thing mm. from time to time i just i just totally shave i just leave the mustache or i just play with it because i know i'm gonna grow it back within a week or two it's really easy for me to grow a beard so if I show you today, uh, I would say like in two, three weeks, I have this, what you see now. So right. it's crazy. It's actually crazy, but I love it. Yeah. But I love it. Yeah. yeah. It took me a long time to get like a full beard, a long time. I had spots everywhere, you know, now, and I, I like my beard, you know, but I can't grow it long. Yeah, it's I physically, I could, but my skin is so sensitive that 
when when my beard gets too long, I could feel each hair touching each hair. I, it, yeah. It, it, crazy so i would just like crop down and, and you know just keep it nice and trim and stuff but i know that one time i was trimming and i had the setting too high <laughs> and i was like oh my god i got it so i took it all off and but i, I couldn't wait to get it back on it's, it's yeah it's a different feeling when you have a bit plus i just hate shaving every day it's just it's nuts and i feel it's a it's a different different character different person like when i see myself with beard it's like this is who i am but when I when I shave it, it's like, who is this person? Right. You know, like the way you smile is a bit different. The way you like look is different from all shapes, from all profiles. It's like, who is this person? So, right. so it, it's yeah, it's a character. Yeah. So going back into hustle, where do you get your hustle dance inspiration? Because you, I've seen you do things. I have an idea, but I want you to be able to kind of let us in on what goes through you as far as being inspired to dance the type of patterns and the type of connective movements that you have with your partner in, in hustle so in my mind is that i like to be stylish right in my mind what's happening is style over technique but let me explain that we need to build a technique to understand like what we're doing how we're doing it you cannot build a house without having a proper base, right? So this is what I mean. But once you build a house and what you're going to put in is your style. And this is how I'm looking at it. Like, I want to have strong foundation with everything, within the technique. But on the top, I'm going to be adding the style. And that's the thing why I'm going to be different. Because we are all unique. You dance different than me. Everybody else dance different okay. than me. And uh, this is what I kind of like like to be to be basically different. So the inspiration is coming from from all around. It's coming from jazz. It's coming from just seeing old dancers how they pose on a picture. Let's say that's what I was talking about the shapes. Sure, right? That's the style. If I'm gonna be so, let's say just like this. If I'm gonna be sitting like this, or if I'm gonna be all the time sitting like this, it's already kind of like changing a little character, right? right? So this is what I'm kind of like trying to play with. And this is what I'm getting from is like the old funk bands, old jazz people, dancers, like how they look, what they do. Definitely taking a lot of inspiration from West Coast Swing. I would say like one of the main parts where I'm taking the inspiration from. You mean from the look or because you, you, don't, you don't dance West Coast, do you? Or... I don't. I right. don't at all. Look of it. Look of it, yeah. yeah. How they style, how they... Very jolly. How they, yes, how they approach the music. That's what I'm really inspired from. I'm really inspired from tango. I don't do it, but I'm really inspired by it. Like how they, how it looks like, how they hold the body. And it's a, it's a character as well. And I'm basically inspired by everything what's around me. Like by people who are actually not even dancers and how they move. And they don't even know how they move. Mm. But it's something that inspired me to move a certain way. So I think it's coming from like all around. And I think I always say like it's good for people to watch a lot of people and to learn from many people, not just from one person, because it's always just like one point of view. And I think we should be able to get more teachers in our life who are we learning from because everybody going to explain certain things in a different way in their own language. And many times it happened to me as well that one move I couldn't understand for some, from so many people. And then one person came and he told me his way. And I was like, oh my God, clicked. You know, so it's many times it just like depends on that. So I love to learn from like so many people and to, and then basically take what I want. And from every person that I'm learning, it's like, I'm taking this, I'm taking this, I'm taking this. And then I'm trying to be, try, trying to do it basically the way I feel. So is it inspired, but I'm doing it myself. Yeah, so that's, yeah. That's a distinction for those of you who are watching. T-Boy is coming from a space of experience though, because you're, you've already uh, locked in on technique and the standardized way to move in it so that you can actually, it's, it's just like I was having a conversation with Jamal and we spoke about how 
fellas, leaders are are not not all of them, but some of them, especially the the newer dancers, are not doing the steps yeah. and they're doing patterns. Yeah. And, and but then there are OGs who or veterans who are I consider you a veteran who are dancing and they may not be moving their feet all the time, but they don't need to all the time because they understand the fundamentals of exactly. what's going on dance. It's not only just timing. Connection plays a big part in it. Oh, yeah. And so this is coupled with being an experienced dancer and getting information from multiple sources. I'm going to say it that way. And then picking and choosing what works for you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And creating T-Boy. T-Boy's approach to hustle. Yeah. Because I think like as many times, like there were many people who didn't really inspire me as a teacher, right? And it's totally okay. It doesn't mean that I'm always going to inspire someone. And it's totally fine. We just need to like learn like, oh, if you like something from someone, don't take the thing, take the idea of the thing. So there is something about it. It's just, you don't want to take something who is someone. You just want to take the idea, how it came to that part. So I can switch it and do it somehow myself. So it's going to become like my style. And this is how I'm going to feel. So... Yeah, and I think it's really important as well to always give the props and to mention the person, like who you took the idea from and right. don't just like keep it for yourself because that's something good for them as well because I'm, I love to hear when someone is inspired by me and when they tell me. It's, it's the same thing. It's like when I love to tell the people that, oh, you know what I'm, when I'm doing this? This is exactly from you. And I'm telling the idea where it's come from. So... Right. It's a, you know, like giving respect to the people. I think it's really important. Absolutely. I, I totally agree with that. But going back to that, that, that other thing that we were talking about where you're taking multiple ideas from different sources and using them, but that has to come from a space of experience first. So mm -hmm. I'm saying is for whoever is watching, if you're new to the dance, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right? yeah. You, still need to, you still need to learn your fundamentals, you have to be strong in, in the fundamentals before you can start doing that. Like, yeah. I know some people are going out there, they're new and they're learning from four or five, six different instructors. And it's, it, that can be very, it's information overload. Who's right? Who's wrong? How should I do this? Should I do it this way? No, stick with one person, two tops for however long that you, it takes for you to get it down rock solid. And at the same time, dance, right? Because you're sometimes your biggest lessons are on the social dance floor, right? And 100%. So, so coming from a, a place of experience, do that. Do exactly what you're saying. And, you know, use these things and be inspired and then experiment and make mistakes and feel foolish and look look stupid or whatever. But then you go, oh, I do it again, I do it again, I do it again, I do it again. Yeah. You know? It gets better, but don't do it from a, from a space of being a novice and doing yeah, all of that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. what I, that's what I meant. Like when I was giving this kind of like no, sure. how I'm inspired is that like once you get like to a certain level, you want to get more basically into it, you know, and like look for like different spaces, like what can basically make you a better dancer. As a beginner, definitely like that's in no way like you have to work on your, on the basics. There is. We don't even, right, right. we're not talking about that. <laughs> That's a must. That's a must. What was your biggest challenge as a lead and how did you overcome that? I think in the beginning, it was like how I didn't really want you to dance with like other people. It was like really when I was a beginner. You know? and, I, and I think it was just, I just went and asked like other people at the social, even I didn't really want it to. And I just kind of like overcome it. And I think I'm having this thing kind of like in my mind for like, like many years as a, as a street dancer as well, that I throw myself into, into something that I don't really enjoy. Then that being said, let's say, if I'm at the battle, street dance battle, and I don't like the song, I still go. Right. right? Let's say, or there, if there is a cypher, and uh, I, I, see like, I see like, oh, I don't really like the music, but my body just go in. And my mind is saying that, well, now survive, you know, well, now is the, the thing that you have to do something with it. So I kind of like challenge myself constantly. 
with see. this. And I think that's kind of like what was happening with the hustle at that time as well, that I just didn't really want it to, but I was like, well, okay, I'm here. Then let me go and ask someone to dance. Obviously, many times that time it was a terrible dance and I didn't, didn't want it to be there at the party anymore. But right. <laughs> I think, but I think it all gives you, it gives you a lesson, you know, it gives you a lesson. Yes. And the thing is that you can think back on that and go, wow, man, I remember when I, wow. And now, that yeah, be, and, yeah. And you have such a, you have such a feeling about your own progress. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like now, when I'm looking back, oh my God, yeah. Like I have a thing that I, I cannot look in my videos like past, I mean, sorry, before 20, before 2017, 18, I cannot look in my videos. Oh my <laughs> God, that was so bad. <laughs> like now yeah. with my, with how I dance now and where is my, my mind now with all the dance, it's a, it's a so different. Yeah. But that time I loved it. I loved it how I moved the time, but now I would, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's so funny, too, because, like, when I came back to dancing, I, I had such a, I was so rusty, oh, my goodness, and, and I looked bad. I looked like, I looked like an old guy trying to get through this thing, <laughs> and it bothered me, but I was so grateful and thankful that there was video of me that I could critique myself Love and it. say, these are the things that I need to work on, mm -hmm. and these are the things that I don't like about myself to make that change, to come back to how I feel hustle should look the way when I dance it. And so I, I'm really thankful that I'm able to do that because then when I get into my dances and when I'm learning new things or when I'm reminded of other things, because there's a lot I forgot, a lot. And coming back, I mean, I hadn't even forgotten the basic. I had to be kick-started, so to speak. I, the girl had to start first. Right, the follower had to start first before I could actually get, and then okay, so mm -hmm. I get into the rhythm and do that, you know. And it, it's, but you know, on that same vein, kind of, you know, as a follower, and I know that you follow. What what's the biggest tip you can suggest to other followers? Engage your core. People who are getting into following, or you know, not regularly follows. Engage your core and look up. That's kind of two things that I got uh, set from uh, Archie Burning. Mm. when he was leading me yeah, I remember exactly in London I remember exactly the moment he was like look at me and engage your core and that's something that I would say to every single follower as well like if mm -hmm. there is any any tip it's the I think like the core thing it's a big mystery that we don't talk about and I think like we should be able to talk about it more and uh, especially like in the classes because yeah especially like when you teach because it really helps so much and when you're thinking about it it's like the main is the main thing in every dance in in ballet in other street dances in anything you do it's like the same thing like when yeah like when you do a, when you do gym let's say you have to right yes. every movement requires core even if you're yeah. doing heel raises whatever yeah your yeah. core needs to be yeah. engaged uh, i'm teaching uh a class which is called grooves right and it's a solo dance and basically like a party movement and i always say like to engage your course engage your core because the movement will look 100 percent, right it's gonna take a bit more effort because it's gonna take a bit more energy out of you to engage because you're using more muscle than actually you have to right kind of you think of that Mm -hmm. But it's actually, it's helping you to finish the movement, to make you stronger, to make you more stable after the turns, like, especially like when we're turning and I feel like I'm engaging my core and I'm being aware of that. It's a different, different feeling. And especially like when I know, if we know like how to explain this at the classes, I think is, yeah, I think we should be, we all should be like taking like more, kind of like being more aware of that. Yes, I'm in total agreement with that. As a personal trainer myself, that's one of the main things that before we actually do most movements, I'm always reminding clients that you need to engage your core. And yeah. in dance especially, it's important. I've had similar conversations where the topic has come up with several of the guests. You know, Jamal is one, uh, Derek Allen, uh, and I forget who, you know, whomever. With you, that's three already. And it's important. And what's also important, too, is is how to describe what the core is, how to engage your core, because you yeah. say 
core. Some people don't know how to do that. Yeah. And people don't even know. They, they realize, like, your core is between your ribs and your hips. Yeah. Front and back, that's your, that's your whole core. So in order to engage that and get that happening, that solidifies your body. Because yeah. the only bones that are in there in between is your spine, right? Yeah, so you, yeah, yeah. So it's good. That's a very good point. But whenever it comes up, to really elucidate your students or your yeah. audience on the core so that your dancing will your dancing looks, will improve. It, yeah, it will it's, look, gonna, it's you're basically gonna look stronger. Yeah. And uh, and you're gonna execute better too. Yeah, 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 definitely. And you will be much, much quicker ready for movement, for like stuff for another pattern or like uh, you will be ready when you let's say you're gonna do a dip with your follower, you know? Because when I do a dip, I you have to engage basically your core. And this yeah. is many times happening, you know, like when you're freestanding with someone. I remember this when I was dancing with uh, Veronica Garcia. We are jamming on, on the social and out of nowhere, I'm having her in my frame and she just dropped down to the floor, right? Or to a split. Right. To a split. I mean, I was like, I was like, what? But I, uh, then I was thinking about it. I was like, if I didn't, if I wasn't engaged in my core, it could like, you know, like. Or your back. I, you can see yeah. it. You before. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's really important like to understand like how we're using it. I'm always saying like when I dance, I have it always engaged basically for like 20, 30 percent. And then when I need it, I can like play with the range of my engagement, like to go like to a 90 to a hundred. Now I need it because we are about to do a drop. Now I understand like, oh, now I have to tense, my, hold my, like engage the core and my back so I can, I'm not going to hurt myself and my partner. And I'm going to be able to hold her in a certain position, let's say. And then when you're coming back out of it, like you need power for that, right? And the power yeah. I feel I'm taking from my core every time. So because I'm never just purely relaxed in my, in my body, and mm -hmm. I'm always aware that I'm like 20, 30 person, always kind of engaged, that's kind of like really helping, at least to me. Yeah, I think the benefits when you pay attention to it. Yeah you realize the benefits of doing that. So, you know, yeah, the benefits are immense. You know, yeah. when you realize that your core is really doing the job of what, yeah, you, you use other muscles to compensate for that. It, it doesn't come out the same. You know? And when you breathe, that's another really, really important thing to understand how you breathe throughout your dance as a lead or as a follow. It's a, yeah, that's a game changer too. Breathing and core and and connectivity, they all they all work in concert. Yes. Yeah. Uh, any hustle plans of interest you can share with us? Yes, actually. So uh, next week we are doing the hustle social and the workshop here in Bratislava. That's in March. Yeah. Yeah. And and then the very exciting thing is basically ahead of me. I'm going, I'm going on a tour to US. It's going to start on the 14th of April when I'm flying to New York. I'll be there for a few days. And then from there, I'm going to Chicago. From Chicago, I'm going to Bay Area. So I'm going to be in uh, San Francisco, Oakland, and San, uh, San Jose. From there, going down to LA and then to San Diego. Wow. So Great. I'm going to be, yeah, uh, I'm really happy and I'm really excited. I'm going to be basically teach, teaching in every city. Uh, in some cities, there will be some uh, battles going on and uh, competitions going on. So I'm going to be judging as well. Oh, good. And it's going to be lots of dancing. Yeah, it's going to be basically, uh, it's amazing. I'm I'm really, really looking forward. Yeah. Any plans for the uh, International Latin Hustle Festival? Yes, we're planning to be there as well with Anita. We are there and as well, I'll be in LA in October. Oh, good. For the... It LA in Hustle Fest. Capacity, in what capacity? You're there as attendees or as part of the staff or? As a part of the staff. That's what I'm trying to get out there. <laughs> I, as want a part. To <laughs> I, want, I don't want to just say, oh, so I know that you're doing this. Yeah. yeah I want you to say it because it's, it's, it's important. You know, I think it's yeah. I, a wonderful thing this year that you're now starting to get on that circuit, you know, not just as an attendee and maybe competing and all that, but also on staff. And so, yeah. You were on staff at LA last year, but yeah. you know, I think Billy's event 
is also a primo event. LA was primo, but LA is primo. I mean, uh, Miami is primo as well. And yeah, the fact yeah. That you're in on The Godfather. Yeah, uh, yeah. So we are <laughs> happy and proud to be there as a as a part of the of the staff in Miami. I'm be actually teaching with Anita. Nice. And then LA, I'm gonna be with Inga. So yes. yeah, looking forward. Looking forward. I'm so happy for you, man. Really, I'm. Yeah, uh, I'm thank you. Sure that you're part of this of the global community, but as a as a spearhead, you know, not just. I mean, anything that you do would, would be awesome because your hustle is great. I love to watch you dance. I love. I mean, there's there's one particular thing that I captured with you and Shay. Shay was leading you, and then you you got into some kind of funky popping thing, and Shay went right there with you. You know, and it was good. And I was fortunate enough to be there to capture that. You know? Yeah. But I think that we need folks like you to help with this present resurgence because the hustle is the last American dance created right here in the Bronx, and. Post COVID, regardless of the effects of that time frame, it actually helped the dance because yeah. people were missing, you know, I mean, with salsa too and, and other uh, partner dances, but we missed being together, touching each other, dancing and all that. And also, disco ha is also having a resurgence, you know, musically. So those two, you know, married together with other forms of dance music that comes out that helps to bring hustle to the forefront is. Great. And the fact that a lot of us, I say us too, because, you know, I'm, I'm doing whatever I can to help push, yeah, part of it, yeah. you know, hustle forward, but you're also part of that movement. And when we all are doing our thing, the hustle benefits greatly. And I had a prediction about 2025 is, you know, regarding the hustle. And I feel that by that time, I think that hustle could be a household word again. Mm -hmm. but, Phrase like salsa became, you know, salsa. Now you, you know, salsa is big. It's been yeah, big. It's a big. salsa was big too, but then it took a nosedive for a lot of different reasons. And I predict that by 2025, we should be a household phrase again. Latin hustle, uh, primarily Latin hustle. You know that those, yeah. those are that that I feel will bring us forward as a community as dancers that really are passionate about the dance exactly and about the music yes and about the music yes i mean i have my own ideas about music in general like i'm not crazy about all the music that's being used for people who dance hustle too that's my own personal preference i don't look down on anybody about it though i'm not like uh, my nose is not up in the air and stuff because you know oh yeah, yeah like this goal would have you, but I do have my own ideas about it, which at a separate podcast, I, I might talk about it. But where we're going, I think is good. We're going in a great direction and, and we're going it too. a nice head of steam, right? Yeah, I feel it too. Uh, and uh, and I would say just beautiful thing is that it's really growing everywhere around the world. Yes. That to the point that I don't really think like, the OGs who started like all these dance in the 60s, 70s, like they would, I don't really think like they would think of this, that at some point there will be a, a hustle going on, let's say in Asia or in Europe somewhere, you know, it was just like a kids in, in Bronx doing the thing. And uh, it's magic. It's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, in the 70s, we, we probably thought that it was going to be there forever because, you know, after Saturday Night Fever, that's oh, yeah. what really it presented the hustle to the world, even though it was mistakenly presented, it was still, it was a, an explosion. Yeah. And then it was like down a few years later by those who are against disco, but that's a whole nother story. But yeah, yeah I didn't think that you know, 50 years later, we were going to be talking about it the way we're talking about it now, you know? So speaking of which, this is a question. I, I know I've said this several times and I can say that because I've, I've done this several times now, but this is a question that all my guests will get. And what is Latin hustle to you? Let us know with what you've experienced, what you've been taught, what you've seen, and your own ideation. What is Latin hustle to you? It's like for me, it's something that it fills me up because I love the music that it's being done to, and I love to dance hustle like to different type of music as well. And I love how it makes me feel. 
I think because it has this kind of like a it, because Latin has in in general like this kind of like a going out and back, going out and back together. It it can it can flows really nice, and it you can create so much on the spot. And I love to freestyle because obviously because I'm a street dancer, so the freestyle part coming to me like basically normally. So I love this. I love this risk taking stuff that when I'm <laughs> dancing with someone and I'm aware that let's say, oh, if I stand here, this can happen. If I stand here, this can happen. And then as well, I'm, as I said before, that, that, uh, then I'm challenging myself. Oh, I'm going to stay here and I'm going to try this. So it's kind of like, it can create like so much, like a nice flow, which goes really well with the music. It just gives me this feeling many times when I have like a butterflies in my belly, like it really works right. while you're dancing with someone, not just on your own as a solo dancer, but with someone. And uh, I think like when you can share this kind of feeling and this amazing moment that you feel with someone else, I think it's uh, you creating memories, right? So yeah, this is, this is what is Latin hustle for me. It's the, the feeling, the pureness of it, the, the making mistakes, the fun of it, the being present in what I'm doing, when I'm doing, how I'm doing. Nice. Does it make sense? It does. It does. You're coming from your own space to describe yeah. what it is for you. That's part of what I'm searching for with, with everyone to see with, I have my own thoughts, which I'm, I won't share here, at least not today. Okay. <laughs> I want folks to understand you. That part of the conversation here is for people to get to know you, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. that's for those who don't already know you, or even those who do know you, maybe, maybe you said something about yourself that they didn't know about yeah. and that, that we all should know about ourselves. Definitely. Yeah. That's why even I will get interviewed in, in one point in time, <laughs> you know, like maybe next year, maybe on the anniversary or something, you know, I'll get it. Yeah, you should. But, yeah. But I want folks to understand at least in this tiny moment, your perspective in this particular dance, we all love and share. It's a, to me, it's a, I have, I feel I have two characters when I dance popping, my street dance, and when I do hustle. When I do hustle, I feel more, more gentle, more like the, I would say funny, more like the romantic person because I'm dancing with someone and I'm sharing this moment with someone. And mm. then when I'm dancing on my own, the rawness from me is coming out, you know, that I cannot share with someone when I'm dancing with. It's a, you know, right? That doesn't make sense. It's these two characters that I'm basically switching in myself and I love it. And mm. I love that I'm able and I'm that I can basically switch it. And I love how hustle makes me feel. And obviously I love how popping makes me feel, but with hustle is this kind of, is this kind of like a character that's coming out of me and it makes me, it, yeah, it makes me really happy. It makes me, it fills me up. It fills me up. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that, that's very nice. Yeah. Getting filled up. That says a lot. That's a big thing. It fills me up. You feel yeah. sated. And I feel nice now. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. You know, like the the feeling in your body is real, and you mm -hmm. think, And uh, I think the most important thing is to be aware of it. Is how you feel right now, like when when that happened. I have so many dance uh, dances that basically I remember till today. You know, because it makes me feel a certain way, and it's beautiful. Well, we're we're at the end. This is such a great conversation. But before we go. Any last thoughts or comments you'd like to make, uh, even if it's uh, promoting something or, or, or a, a topic that we haven't covered uh, that we can speak on briefly or whatever, but any last thoughts or comments you'd like to make? Um, I would say for people when they dance, less is more. It's kind of like my thing in my mind, like what's going on, less is more. Focus more on the music than on the just pattern after pattern. You're going to have much more fun with it. And yeah, to try to be yourself when you dance, be who you are, because that's how you're going to get unique. And that's how you're basically going to show who you really are. Then I'm like realizing one thing that people are going to remember you because of your style, because how you dance, right. not just because you have amazing technique, right? I know so many dancers 
in a partner dance world or a, or a street dance world that they have amazing technique but because there is no style into it not 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 like a like a sauce on the top you know what i mean like you're not putting yourself into it you're not gonna be remembered to me at least because when I, when I see someone, I want to see you. I want to see yourself, like what makes you happy and be open to it and not be afraid to basically show me yourself. So this is what I would, I would say, yeah. And have fun, most importantly. Yes, absolutely. And uh, looking forward to all the dances uh, this year. It's going to be a lot of dancers, so make sure you grab me on the dance floor. Yes, yes. I'm or I'm going to grab you. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing you at uh, in the future events that We'll be attending together. Hey, listen, is Anita is Anita around? Is she there? Yeah, she's around. Anita, Anita, come, tell her to come come over. Anita, come quickly here. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, this is your left. Sit, 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 sit. I Hello. just want everybody to see. I want everybody to see you too, right? This is Anita, the lovely Anita. Yes, beautiful. <laughs> Dancer and T Boys, one and only. Aww. Yes, yes, and we know we know that. I mean, at least the three of us know that, right? <laughs> I want the world to see this too, and so uh, I didn't want to go without saying hello and goodbye, you know, to Anita, who is just a joy to be around. And with that being said, I want to say goodbye to everyone. Thank you so much, the two of you, because, you know, you helped prepare, uh, Anita. <laughs> yes. And, uh, yes, it, you made things a little bit easier prior to hitting the record button. Yeah. And I want to say, folks, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Uh, share this with everyone that you want to, as well as watching other M123 stuff, like the videos and other things that we have prepared for you. Here is the great and wonderful uh, joy to talk with. Tomas T Boy Trophy and yes. Anita. Say goodbye, folks. Bye. Thank you so much for the talk. It was a pleasure to share and uh, looking forward to seeing you soon. Yes, awesome. Hey, Mike Bello here in the M123 studio with the Let's Talk Hustle podcast. I want to give a quick shout out to New Circle Films who were so gracious to sponsor me with product, especially this particular boom arm for the for the microphone, as well as some lighting. So yeah, it's really helped to uh, give uh, a greater look to the podcast. So thank you, New Circle Films. And of course, uh, the other shout out, you know, uh, tongue in cheek to N123 because the podcast is uh, residing in the uh, N123 channel. So that's it, folks. See you in the next video.